name is Jessica Berard. I'm from Shelton, Connecticut, and I currently am finishing up my master's at Fairfield University in clinical mental health counseling. And I also just passed my licensure test to be a licensed therapist. And I am a dancer. I teach, I choreograph, um, and I've been dancing since I was a little girl. Um, my greatest passion in a more general sense would be just making a difference in somebody else's life, helping others, you know, being empathetic. Um, I think that that human connection and human relationships are huge and can really make a difference in somebody's life. So that's my overall passion and being more specific how I plan to pursue that is through dance and through, um, you know, focusing more on their mental health and what's going on up here as well as their dance movement. Yeah. And when you talk about the emotional connection, why do you think that you want to give that to somebody else? Like, did somebody give that to you or like mm -hmm. where is somewhere that you saw it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think with, especially with dance, I think uh, at some point somebody has had that person who pushed them or inspired them, who kept them from giving up. Um, and yes, me personally, I've had, um, you know, a couple of people, um, Maria Chernisky and Ashley Anderson have both played like a huge role in my life. So they really did that for me. It was more, it went beyond dance. It was, you know, what's, what's going on up here? Like what's going on personally? Like, you know, teaching to the student and really like, you know, adapting to what I needed and pushing me to do that. And I think that if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't be where I am. So it makes a huge difference. Um, so something that I'm proud of is outside of dance wise, just finishing up my master's I think is something huge while still pursuing dance. I think in the beginning I didn't think that that was going to be possible. I thought it was either one or the other and I kind of was able to get through still, still doing both and I think that that was something I was afraid of losing at the time and just knowing that now I'm finishing up my program and I, I danced all throughout it still and continue to teach and continue to learn and grow. So I think that that is something I'm definitely proud of. Um, I think another part of dance that I'm very proud of is uh, seeing some, some of my students that just grow over time gradually, um, seeing their process and seeing them become more of themselves and learning themselves and um, you know kind of finding who they are as a dancer and I think that that's just beautiful to watch as a teacher I think that that's the ultimate purpose is to see that that kind of light bulb moment so um, inspiration I I think it changes depending on like where I am um, I think a lot of the time I find inspiration through other dancers, hearing how their path went, um, and noticing that like it may be different from mine, but seeing that they were able to conquer these things, and um, so definitely other dancers, communicating with other dancers, and I just find inspiration through Wolf well, my family also, um, but just anything very, I think sometimes I have to sit with myself and, and really like look at things around me that Maybe I didn't find inspiring before, but kind of re-inspire me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like things like nature, um, you know, maybe engaging in like some type of self-care, something I didn't try before. So I think taking risks is also a part of finding more inspiration. Cool. Um, my intention, definitely, I always try to portray some type of story or um, some type of emotion. Uh, I never create just to like create something and put it out there. Uh, I always take that time before I start creating to think of like who is this being created for? What am I trying to portray and how do I want to make them feel? I think the ultimate goal is is how I want to make somebody feel at the end of the day. Like how, you know, whether it be like a really hype dance or like, you know, they're getting really excited for it or if it's more emotional and it kind of is more of a storyline. Um, so I always try to have some type of purpose um, but normally how I want to make the the audience feel or whoever whoever's watching it whether it be a video or performance on stage just how 
how I want to leave those people feeling at the end. Yeah. Somebody like posting about how they just started a new diet and you're like, oh, I need to be dieting. I need to be doing this. So it's like, it's almost like directing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's starting to become something that we're like basing on or, you know, just obviously all these celebrities and all the, the makeup tutorials and like people <laughs> spending hours watching these things. And how many of you like lay down at night and you are on your phone and the next thing you know, it's like four in the morning. <laughs> And you're like, I just laid, like that's four hours of my life that I just sat like laying on a phone. Yeah. Right. Oh, and yeah. it used to, I feel like it used to be something where like, yeah, we're sharing like some special moments. Now it's, it's like, bad. everybody's wow. posting everything. And we're all looking at, it's just like, it's really blowing my mind. I think if you, if you really look inside yourself and look at what you're doing on a daily basis and you're authentic about it and doing it for yourself and what's going to get you to the next place that you want to be for yourself that's awesome but i think a lot of the time we are doing things for to sh i don't know show people i guess mm -hmm. and i think that that's like something that i'm working on and you know i hope that by hearing this that you guys will start to pay more attention to it because it really does feel different if you go without your phone mm -hmm. it's like really scary at first and like stressful and, you're like, oh. and then like after like two hours pass you're like I love this like I mm -hmm. I think my phone broke like last year at some point and I didn't have it for like two three days and I think it was like the best two three days of my life like you start to notice things you've never noticed before um so I'm like really really big on that and just being like intentional behind what you're posting and like what meaning does this have so that's what this dance is really about and it's it's going to be half of you are like going to be in business attire and you're going to be having a phone and looking down at your phone a lot and then half of you are going to be wearing like um earthy tones like greens and browns and you guys are going to be the ones that are like the people not on your phones and it's like this it'll be so yeah i hope that again i usually try to hopefully get you guys to get something out of the dance not just movements and all that so yeah you guys ready to start yes I think I've had a lot of pivotal moments in in my life, mainly with dance. I think I feel most alive when I'm dancing. Um, if I could try to put my finger on one, it would have to be a performance that I did. Um, it was in the month of December. And I think that performance was one of the first ones where I just like, I went to this other place with dance. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't just movement anymore. It was like, I just totally blacked out and it, it was, the feeling was nothing I've ever felt before. Um, so I think that that moment in time was when I really was like, yeah, I need to do this for the rest of my life. Like I can't, I can't, that feeling that I had and I think since then I've been able to grow so much because I know that, that that feeling is possible and that's the reason I'm dancing, not like for anything else other than that feeling that I had on stage that time. And it was just a very real, very, um, very natural, authentic feeling and it was just like getting completely lost. So I think that that moment was when, you know, I noticed a couple of things, the power of dance and then just that I was never going to stop. So. So that moment when you blacked out and you felt like you were on another planet, basically. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other areas in your life where that happens? Or is dance just like on this other level that like nothing else can really compare to? Um, so I think d dance is definitely on a, on a different level. Like I've also, I play sports growing up. I've done that whole thing. I used to, you know, think I was going to be like the first girl in the NBA. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, sports definitely brought me to a place where I was, like, you know, loving every moment. Like, you know, the emotions were like this throughout seasons, and it brought me, it made me feel alive. But I think with dance, it's, it's just a different, it's really kind of, like, irreplaceable, and I can't compare those two. Um, and just, you know, I have other things in my life that, that make me feel good and make me feel alive, but I think dance definitely has that unique, uniqueness to it. That yeah. That is not, yeah. Do you think it's the fact that it's a very physically demanding sport and it combines creativity with that? Yeah, yeah no, definitely, I definitely agree. I think, just as you said, like, it's that physicalness, 
but it's also the the creativity behind it, the emotion behind it. Um, yeah, it's definitely combining those two. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, the most I think probably I think my heart. Um, I think just I think ever since I was little I've had this this deep, deep sense of empathy to a point where, you know, sometimes it could be damaging, but at the same time, like, I've been able to, as I've grown older, I've been able to control it a little bit more, but I think just from what I've heard from other people and, and at this point, I think that deep sense of just caring and giving, and and not just in a sense where, like, I'm, I'm going to care about you, but, like, ultimately it's for myself, like, I truly, truly care for other people, and I really really want to help other people and I want to see them succeed and I want to you know see their process and see them do good so I think ultimately probably my heart and how big it is okay so this one's probably gonna go deep um so I think two most defining times so definitely I when I got to a place with dance that I thought I was gonna just stop and and give it up and I think what I did at that time was I I thought that it wasn't really like a possibility and I didn't you know I didn't feel good enough and comparing myself to everybody else and I think at that moment I could have gone two different ways I could have stopped and I could have completely given up but I think just something inside just kept saying like no you you can't do that like that that's not possible. Um, you know, I, I had like a knee injury and I was out for a long time. And during that time, I noticed that like anxiety, I was a little bit depressed. Like it was a very dark time and I couldn't really figure out, well, you know, I know I'm a very active person, so that, that played a role in it. But I ultimately feel like it was definitely being away from dance for so long. So I think uh, probably just coming to that point where, you know, I think every dancer at some point is like, I'm just going to stop. I, I can't do this anymore. Like, it's taking a toll on my body. It's taking a toll on my mind. Um, so I think just my way of dealing with that and how I came back from that, I think that that was a huge moment in my life. How did it um, feel to come back from it? It felt Nat it felt like that's how it was supposed to be. Um, I didn't see that at first. I think at that moment I was just kind of like, all right, I'm just, I need to keep doing this. Like I need to, it's just something that I have to do. It was almost like something was pulling me. I didn't really see it at the time. And then once I went back to it and I continued to grow and continue to love it and even more and fall in love with it all over again, that's when I realized like, oh, that's why. Like something was just telling me like, you can't, you can't stop this. That was definitely a huge um, moment in my life. Um, kind of similar, uh, just you know, probably what I've what I've been through and and the different things that have occurred in my life and different experiences and negative experiences, dramatic experiences, and um, oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and just coming back from that, and yeah. you know, it it could get dark. But if I could tell anybody something at this moment, it would be that, you know, these, this dark place isn't going to last forever. And you can make it through. And, you know, I did a lot of work on myself. And I worked really hard to, like, pull myself out of things. Um, so I think that people are stronger than they think. And I think I was stronger than I thought. And so I think both those moments both having to do with like pulling, pushing forward in times where you think like, I can't. I think I still need to, you know, this is something that I, I will hopefully work on with, with other people in the future. I think I still need to let go of letting myself block me. Like, you know, I feel that in dance, a lot of the time, like we're comparing and we're, you know, looking at other people's journeys and feeling like that has to be our own. Um, and I've gotten to a place where I know my path and I know that my path is unique to me and, and that's okay. So I've learned to accept that. But I think there's still moments where um, I let my own head get in the way, my own thoughts get in the way. 
Um, so working on just being able to, you know, and I've gotten better at it, but I think that I could still do some more work to identify these thoughts and, and find different ways to replace them with new thoughts. So I think, yeah, just letting go of letting myself stop me. Oh, um, so a couple of months ago, I got wireless beats from my boyfriend on my birthday. And I was in a car one day and I'm telling you, they disappeared. I don't know where they went. Like I was in the car with the beats, got out of the car and they were not there anymore, so I really don't know what happened. But I was really, 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 really upset about that. And I told my dance company about it, um, Flux Momentum. And as a dancer, having wireless beats is so important, being a choreographer and, uh, you know, trying to do routines where, like, the wire's, like, wrapping around. <laughs> so I had just mentioned this story at rehearsal one time, and just a couple of nights ago when I was there, um, Ashley actually gave me new wireless beats. And I just like, I, nobody, I, like I've had wonderful things, like my family, um, you know, I have close friends who have done amazing things. Um, my boyfriend does amazing things, but this was like one of those moments where it was completely out of the blue. Like there was no reason. It's not my birthday, it's not Christmas, it's, you know, I didn't need a gift. I didn't, des you know, deserve a gift. Well, I didn't think I deserved a gift. And she just bought me these new wireless Beats, and she wrote a card, and, you know, it was just basically that she wanted to show me that she was proud of me, and just that she noticed that, and did such an act like that with, with getting the Beats for me, and knowing how much it meant to me. So I think that that was just huge. I know it sounds silly over like wireless beats, but that was like, for me, it was like a, I'll never forget that. You know, there's definitely specific people in my life that help um, to revive me, but ultimately I think it's something that I, I find within myself. I think with dance, especially, it's, it's, sometimes I need to just look at it differently. I need to change my, my way of thinking about something. So for dance, maybe I, I'll just, for a week, just like take a break and like move for myself, move, like go somewhere and dance and, and just let it be for myself. I think ultimately what revives me as a whole is, is something in, inside of myself, which I think is very hard to get to um, because we're constantly looking for like outside, like we need something from outside of us to pull us back but getting to a place where like I can pull from within and pull something from, you know, like you've been, you know, sometimes I'll tell myself like you've been through this, like you've been through so much already, like don't, don't stop now. So it's almost like a voice within my, within myself, but also just taking that time that I need to get re-inspired and accepting it and being okay with it. So I think ultimately it's just taking that, that break, stepping back for a minute refreshing yourself um, but ultimately has to come from within yeah I think I actually heard this somewhere before or I might have read this somewhere but I feel like love is when you when your needs aren't the only thing involved in, in that concept when when it really becomes like the ultimate love is just like putting your life on the line for somebody else for you know how much sacrifice are you giving how much you know intention behind what you're doing um, you know with dance I'm looking at it for dance too or also with another human being like how much of that human being are you willing to like give your all for and I think just sacrifice I think that's the biggest word that comes to mind with with love is you know, what are you willing to sacrifice for that person, for that, for that passion, for that love? Um, yeah, so I think ultimately sacrifice and just that deep, like deep in your soul, like deep to a point where it's not just surface level, it's not just like, you know, that word love gets like tossed around a lot. You know, everybody's like commenting, oh, love this, love that. Um, 
I'm kind of more fragile with the way that I say love. Like when I say love, like I mean love. Um, but yeah, definitely just the sacrifice and, and what you're willing to put in with that person or that passion. Um, so definitely through my life, the idea that the darkest, darkest, most loneliest times, um, there's, it does get better and, that, and that's hard to hear when you're going through it and it's, you're in that moment, you're like, nothing is going to work for me, nothing is going to make me feel better. Um, it's the idea that you could kind of just, you just keep going, like you just keep moving forward. Um, I remember my mother told me something uh, when she was going through a tough time. I was like, you know, how did you do that? How did you get through that? She's like, I just, you got to put one foot in front of the other. And if that one foot is what you're focusing on, then that's, that's good enough. If you get through that day, if you get through that hour, if you get through that minute of whatever you're feeling, then that is good enough. And eventually over time, it just starts to, it starts to blossom and it starts to, get better and it starts to you start to see it in a different way or something comes up so it would probably be for if anybody's in that moment and feels like it's never going to get better and that there's no light right now just to keep going like just to keep going there's really no you know people try to say like cliche sayings like oh yeah like you'll be fine like just do this just go do this you know, don't really let anybody tell you what to do. You need to find something for yourself. You need to find what what's going to be your purpose, what's going to be your meaning, and you need to strive for that. And it's okay however you get there. But just ultimately that if, if you are going through something, whether it be with dance, whether it be in life, um, those darkest, darkest times, just, just keep going. Mm -hmm.